All right, new project. Gonna increase the precision level, and now we're gonna look at the debris feature, which is similar to scatter, but it's going to respond to the terrain instead of having to manually filter the terrain. I'm going to, for fun, add these sediment flows and increase the water amount, the initial water amount, yeah. And then I'm just gonna add, just for sake here, Rocky Hard, and I'm going to just distribute this real quick based off, um, let's just do Rocky. Where is this distributing at? There we go. All right, so now this uh, arid rocky hard is pasting itself everywhere where it's red. Just a little bit. All right, so now let's look at, and I think I've got my list correctly here. Let's look at the simulation of debris. So this is gonna be very similar to the scatter filter, but it's going to be debris instead. Let's uncheck show mask and you can see it's already showcasing some pretty nice stuff, but let's get even better. Let's go to edit this mask and clear it. The thing you gotta remember about simulation layers is that this mask function, none of it has to do with where the um, pieces that you're simulating are showing up. What you're masking is basically the spawn point. Where do you want to insert the beginning of the simulation of water or sand, or in this case, debris? So let's increase my radius a little bit and brush strength. So, so say I want to paint at the top of this hill. Yeah, I'll paint a little bit more. And maybe I will paint right here if I want to show the mask. So this red area is just the spawn location for uh, the debris. It has nothing to do with the actual debris elements. All right, so you can see it has spawned some rocks at the top of this hill, and there is a simulation running for 130 um, iterations, as you can see here, down this slope. If I want to increase the time that it has to simulate, see, as I'm increasing the iterations, which you can associate iterations with the amount of time the simulation runs, you can see that the debris has more um, time to run down this hill. Let's add a little bit of density so that we can see a bit more what's happening. So if I were to lower the iterations, see rocks are spawning at the top. And as I move the simulation further along in time, you can see these rocks are filling in to all the nooks and crannies. Let me remove this one, maybe that's a little bit better. No, that's good. As I'm moving this iteration along, you can see that the, yeah, the debris is filling in with all the nooks and crannies as it's going down the hill. Furthermore, if we wanted to sort of speed up the distance between things, this delta is controlling sort of the time between iterations. So if I wanted to increase the spacing of the iteration rounds, so let's increase the delta and then lower the iterations, you can see that the debris is having more or less time to move between time intervals. This is really nifty. This one's a really good one. You can see based off of the advanced erosion sediment and the debris, we look like, looks like we have sort of talus simulation here where sand is depositing between all these rocks. It's really um, unique. And maybe these are a little bit too big. So these spawn sizes are directly related to these this uh, density graph here. Say we want to lower the big ones, but we want to increase the probability of the small ones. Let me lower that a little bit. So now we have lowered the amount. You go back over here. Yeah, we have lowered the size of that debris just by changing the spawn densities. So these are this density is just like the level step sliders. It's 
basically controlling the spawns of the different scales of resolution. Uh, acceleration also adjusts the speed of everything. So let me lower the delta and increase the acceleration. If I lower the friction, things will move really quickly. So if I lower the iterations, you can see. I mean, this is really cool. The possibilities of what we're doing is really, really neat. And this isn't just um, objects. This is actually shaping the terrain. If I were to go to shape design, you can see. And maybe down here, I will increase the shape's height, just like we did with the scatter. You can see this is actually morphing the, so the shape of the terrain. And hotter and hotter. Let's see, I hope I'm making sense. I'm just kind of flying through a little bit and make this smaller, more energy efficient, trying to make it better. Okay, okay. All right, you guys are having good conversations. I'll just keep rolling. All right, so let me go ahead and increase some of these sizes because I want some pretty large boulders to appear for this next bit. All right, so you remember whenever we did scatter, oh, this is a good one. Remember whenever we did scatter, we could affect the color of that scatter based off dragging and dropping the material down. Well, you see the debris has, you know, sort of a, a, a variation of colors applied to it. If I were to go down further of this simulation, you can see here's a tint. If I were to change this tint to be something else, you can see now that the tint of the rock is changing based off this gradient. Or just like before, let's choose a preset. Maybe we like, um, see what this these look like. Yeah, these look pretty good. Maybe we wanna add gradient detail. And these are so small, you can't really see the gradient detail. So this is fine. Um, but also, maybe you want to have your own color, your own gradient or color for all of these. Um, we can even lower this a little bit if we want. Then we can add a material. Let's say we want to add a texture, and I haven't done this in for so long. Let me see if I can find. All right, yeah, let's just choose this um, this one right here, this albedo for this rocky moss. Normal. Okay, so we have this, but now we want to drag the debris on top of this texture. And you can see now this texture has been applied quite well, to be honest, to all of these large rocks. And we should be able to, um, if we want the texture to take full advantage, we'll just lower the color blending. Or if we want this gradient to still tint um, this rock color a little bit, kind of like some dithering, we can add that gradient back on top of that texture as a tint. Same thing as we had with scatter, we can change the shape. So let's say a sphere or that looks better, or maybe uh, plates, although those are quite drastic. Um, but we can also import a texture. So let's go back and let's just import uh, where is. We can use use. <laughs> this is not a good example. Let's just use this ambient occlusion texture from that particular rock. And you can see it's distributed. And let me is there a way to. No. So since this texture is square, you have to assume I just imported a texture directly. Let's say we lower this. So this texture, if you had an alpha map, which we do, let's let's open up that star that we had from earlier. Let's see 3D projects, world creator projects, empty dump. So let's take this height map of that star that we created and drag and drop it right there. Perfect, so height, there's the star and there's the, the color 
paste it right on top of that star. Let's do this. Maybe blend this just a little bit more. There we go. That's a wild example, but it's a good example that we can seemingly just add whatever um, height maps we want here for that texture. We can also do a model. Substance materials are fully supported as well. Yes, if you want to go in here, choose a substance material. So add an Adobe substance, and I believe I have some of those. Libraries, substances. Let's just choose this coastal cliff one. There we go. You can see substance and maybe I want the, the uh, debris to affect substance. But that debris needs to go back to simple so that we can see it. So that substance material is right here on top of this rock, which is fantastic. We can adjust the let's see what's this. Yeah, this the scale or the resolution of this rock uh, roughness. Maybe we want it to be super wet. Um, any substance features, like if you were to create your own substance files, all of your parameters would seemingly just be imported right through here. So all of this, all of these um, features could just come right in with it, which is uh, pretty, uh, pretty fascinating.